Hello and welcome back to another episode of Wood Gas Stove Science. Uh, and this is the paint can uh, stove optimization series. Uh, so over the last um, four weeks, I've been working on optimizing this stove. Uh, and um, two weeks ago, I worked on the pot stand and a um, flame concentrator. I didn't get very good results of the flame concentrator and it haunted me. Um, I knew I knew from past experience that flame concentrators can help. Uh, so I worked on the flame concentrator. And as you can see in this picture, you can see that I um, reworked that concentrator and I actually cut 16 slits in it. Uh, and then I twisted them to help the airflow twist around circles. Uh, and that now you're looking at something that um, that I noticed and I was filming and um, I thought I would bring it to you. Uh, this is a film just after I lit this uh, paint can stove and I'm watching it um, go from what looks like a burn that you'd get in a hobo stove um, and then as the outer and inner can heat up and the air starts to flow up the outside and the air starts coming out those secondary holes, you can actually see that flame starting to lift up off of the fuel or the pellets and uh, starting to reignite uh, that air coming up the, top, uh, up the outside. And when that happens, uh, the flames actually lift up and burn above the fuel. And that causes that pyrolysis zone that we've talked about. And that pyrolysis zone is a conversion of wood to wood gas um, in an oxygen free environment. And that's what a pyrolysis zone is. So it's a little bit hard to see, uh, but there is um, flames reigniting uh, uh, out of each one of those um, secondary air jets. And here um, you're going to see that the chimney effect of the pot stand immediately starts to work. Um, and as that chimney starts to heat up and the air is rising, it's pulling more air through those secondary um, air ports. And it's really, really causing those jets of flame um, to work harder and harder. And, and then you see uh, the swirling vortex begin. Uh, and that is uh, basically the trademark of what I'm trying to do. Uh, and here you'll see, um, I waited until dark to do a uh, burn. So you could actually see the color of the flames uh, and actually the flames because it's very hard to see them in the bright sunlight. Uh, so here around three minutes and 40 seconds, um, I decided to put on my new uh, flame concentrator. Uh, and I've actually did about three or four burns in adjusting this flame concentrator um, just to make sure that it, it, it worked well. And this is my final design of it. Uh, and at four minutes, you can see the flames are nice and they're swirling around in circles and you can see some light blue flames around the outside. Now those light blue flames, um, can be caused by hydrogen burning off. Um, there's a few other things and we'll talk about those uh, later. Uh, so here I'm putting on the pot stand and you can immediately see when the pot stand is on that the flame intensifies when that chimney effect works. Uh, so that pot stand is an integral part of this, um, of this stove. Uh, it's probably never going to work perfectly unless you use a pot stand. And I think pot, different pot stands will give you different results um, and give you different types of fire. Uh, so if I wanted to make this into a lantern, I might use a pot stand that was glass, uh, which would be interesting. Uh, so at this point, I saw that the flame looked so good and so strong that I wanted to do a boil test. So I was hurrying around at this point trying to get the boil test ready. Uh, so here um, in a second, I'm going to put on uh, my stainless steel pot uh, with two cups of water in it and then I'm starting the boil test and you can see with my lap timer I just barely started that and it was about five minutes and five seconds after lighting it. Um, so here you can see the flames licking out from underneath and just about um, at 10 minutes um, I, when I lifted the cover off to see if it was boiling, it was boiling. So I stopped the test and um, the length of time for putting the pot on to it um, being a full rolling boil, um, and it might have happened even earlier than this, was just a hair under five minutes. Um, so that is really pretty impressive. Um, so I would say at this point that is a very, very good result. Uh, you can see the flames licking up from underneath it. When I take the pot off, um, you can see the flame uh, is shooting considerably above the top of the uh, pot stand. Uh, here is a beautiful view of that swirling vortex. Um, each one of those uh, 
plumes of flame is coming out of a secondary airport and spinning around at least one and a half to two times. Uh, and depending on the breeze, sometimes it's much, much more than that. Uh, I'm getting a beautiful column of flame swirling around the center. Um, I just, just love this stove. At this point, I could have very easily put on some bacon or some eggs or, or whatever I might want to cook on it um, because it was it's very hot at this point. I think at this point we're about 15 minutes in, um, but it's a beautiful, strong flame. I just want to remind you that all of my tests are done with one cup of, of wood pellet um, and then uh, just a little bit of liquid heat to start up. Uh, here you can see I just showed it was about 18 to 19 minutes um, after starting very very strong flame um, and I'm glad I was able to burn this at night uh, so you can really really see how good it looks um, I would say that my optimization of this stove is pretty close to being done uh, I will do a few more um, experiments and if I come up with anything that is really really noteworthy I'll I will let you know uh, but um, I, I think I think my optimization on this stove is uh, almost complete. Here at about 20 minutes, um, the flames had started to burn down, and being as I was burning at night, uh, it was very obvious that, that it had blue flames near the end. Uh, these blue flames lasted about three to four minutes, um, and it was just at the very end. Uh, you can still see that it is swirling around nicely. Um, and pretty soon the yellow flame will disappear. Uh, now that yellow flame is um, not as hot as the blue flame. The blue flame is looks like it's coming from the final amount of carbon that is left in the char uh, that I've created in the bottom of the stove. Um, but you can see it swirling around. Now during the day after the yellow flame has disappeared and the stove doesn't smoke, um, when you look in it just looks a little bit hazy, almost like there's a cloud inside. Uh, but with it burning at night, you can clearly see that that cloud you can see inside is actually blue f blue flame or almost to the point where it's a white flame. Um, so once the blue flame does disappear, uh, the charcoal continues to um, burn and uh, it continues to stay very hot. Uh, so the overall time of um, from when I first start the wood pellets to when the charcoal actually starts to die out and the heat really starts to dissipate is well over 45 minutes. The burn time um, is roughly 20 to 25 minutes, um, but the usable heat coming off this is around 45 to 50 minutes, uh, which is very impressive with one cup of wood pellets. Uh, I may do a uh, test uh, just to see if I fill the can completely up how long that actually will burn for. The other thing that is nice um, when burning this at night is uh, you can see that as the flames go out, um, and although at night you really can't see the, the smoke, but as these flames go out, there's still no smoke. Not at any point in time throughout this burn was there any smoke that came out of this, this stove. Uh, but one of the things that you will want to notice is that down where the fresh air intake are, you can see a bright orange glow coming out of the stove. And that's because this bottom of the stove is extremely hot. And this is where people have a problem uh, when they cut the ends off their, their outer can. Um, they think they're getting a lot more airflow, but the problem is that the heat coming out the bottom of this uh, type of stove is so hot and so intense especially when you get it very optimized uh, like I have, that it will start um, roots and sticks underneath it uh, on fire. So sometimes all of a sudden you'll start seeing smoke or even flames coming out from underneath your stove. You'll move it and you actually have roots and sticks on fire underneath it. Uh, and that's the last thing that we want to do. I am actually from Arizona. And if I use this stove out in the um, wild, um, I don't want to start a, start a fire because it's devastating out there. Everything is so dry. So please, no matter what type of stove that you build, whether it's one of um, my designs or somebody else's design, uh, please make sure if it is an open can on the bottom that you bring something with you uh, to put underneath the can stove uh, to make sure that you do not start a fire. Um, so here you can see that the blue flames just went out uh, and this is a picture at just 
uh, around 45 minutes and you can see that there is a lot of heat inside that can stove um, and like I said it is you can definitely use it for cooking you can use it for um, uh, just staying warm or just ambiance um, on a on a nice night so thank you very much for joining me um, for this entire series on paint can stove optimization uh, again I appreciate all the comments that everybody has been doing all the likes shares um, and you guys have been great so far so thank you very much and goodbye